Hello, welcome back to the show. We have a bit of a breaking news episode. And no, this isn't about Oasis renewing. <laughs> this is about NVIDIA's earnings. So the second biggest piece of news we had this week. And that's because NVIDIA's earnings came out last night. The headline read, NVIDIA reports 122% revenue growth, but their sales outlook disappoints their shares dropped about 8% after market last night, which is a big move for a company of that, that size of magnitude. What we're going to do in this episode is break down some of those numbers, points of interest. We'll explain not just from the earnings numbers, but also from the conference call. So we'll touch about data centers, revenue and growth expectations, outlooks, and also the upcoming Blackwell chip and how that's going. Then we'll put this into the context of the general macro backdrop and look at equities from a sector perspective. So, starting off with the main headline, their Q2 adjusted EPS did beat expectations, 68 cents against 64. Revenues also big. But one thing that you were talking to me before we jumped on, Piers, was data center revenues. So perhaps you can mm. explain what are data center revenues and then why has that specifically as a metric stood out to you? Well, I mean, these NVIDIA earnings, as we were saying on the podcast last week, and you know, you can read all over the press, you know, are considered to be one of the absolute premier um, economic events of the quarter, right? It's right up there with U.S. labor market data, U.S. inflation data, the Fed, all that kind of stuff, right? And the reason is because of this data center stuff. And that's because NVIDIA is the, absolutely the kind of forebearer of this or the, or the poster child of the AI revolution. And the reason that's the case is because the stuff they build and, and sell is what the big tech boys, so Google, Meta, Amazon, Microsoft, it's what they need, their chips, their H100s, their hopper chips are what they need to build out their, their kind of data center compute power, which is what they are using to train their, their LLMs, right? And their, their, their kind of AI models. So it's, it's, it's very much this data center revenue from NVIDIA is a, a, absolutely a proxy measure for... Uh, capex expenditure in the AI space. Therefore, it's, it's how much are companies investing in going after this AI revolution? And so it's even though it's one number and one company and how much they're making in one of their revenue streams, when you follow that trail, it just becomes this absolute bellwether proxy for the AI revolution, full stop. And that's why it's so important. And so what was it that you interpreted from the data center number from last night? So there's a few, I think there's a few disappointing numbers in this report. Disappointing, I need to qualify that. <laughs> this stock, I mean, it's up 160 or was up 160% year to date, right? In just shy of nine months, it's up 160%. I don't know, go back over two years, it's up a thousand percent. Even though it's up by that much, you're still, you know, it's enterprise to revenue multiples 24 times. This is a beast of a stock price. It's valuation, well, it got to 3.1 trillion before these earnings, right? And this is all based off sensational, stellar growth rates that we've seen in the rearview mirror over the last two years continuing into the future, right? The price of this stock is pricing in phenomenal growth still yet to come. And 120% growth on the top line revenue is, it's great, right? But it's not as good as growth rates in previous earnings reports. So just to put that number, it's 120% growth rate on top line revenue, $30 billion. The growth rate in last quarter's report was 262% growth. 
So the growth rate has, has more than half. That's on the headline revenue. If you, if you go down one level to that really key revenue stream of data center revenue, yeah, growth was, was fantastic, up 154%, right? But the growth rate in the previous quarter was 426%. <laughs> so the growth rate there is, I mean, well, it's not far off quartered. So I guess, uh, you know, as, as the months tick by, the, the, the comps from the quarter before and the year before get ever more challenging to beat. But when you've got a stock price and a valuation like they have, they've got to carry on beating it. And so the decelerating growth rates for me is the kind of... Uh, the really key part of this report and I think confirms in my mind that NVIDIA is no longer the leader of these broader indices to the upside. The question is, does it become the leader on the downside? Um, discuss. What's decreasing or decelerating? How is that surprising? Yeah, it's not, but, okay, so let's put a number on it. Forward guidance, mm -hmm. always a really important part of these earnings, of course, right? Yes, we want to know what's happened in the previous quarter, but, but from a share price point of view, it's, it's way more important, right? What's ahead? What is your revenue going to be in the quarter ahead of us, NVIDIA? And so they announced this, and their forecast was that it would be 32.5%. Oh, sorry. 32.5 billion dollars all right with a plus or minus two percent kind of variance there right now the market had well average expectations were 31.9 billion so their forecast is just a touch above expectations we're not you know nvidia's hasn't been in the business of marginally beating expectations they're in the business of absolutely destroying and smashing expectations um, the, but the most bullish on the street in terms of the forecast was 38 billion revenue for next quarter. So they're 32.5. That's well short. You know, that's 20% off. We're not talking small amounts here. And so that was taken, uh, that certainly contributed to the, um, the negative reaction in the share price that we've seen overnight. And then the other part that, that stood out, so just to get the full picture was talking about this succession of the technology i.e yes. moving into blackwell and i know that they had said previously kind of primed the markets that there had been some problems but in this conference call they actually acknowledged that there was problems and i like the spin that they put on it um, so just to give it a bit of an idea they, they said they had to change a mass production step importantly that's going to improve its yield. And <laughs> what is a mask? The mask is the template used to burn the circuit pattern into material, materials deposited on the disk of silicon. So what this is okay. saying is, it sounds to me like they've had a problem. And the way to make them positive out of that is that, look, this is going to radically increase the potential revenue output and production uh, of this thing. But yeah, what, what did you think of that when you, when you heard about the Blackwell situation? Well, well, actually, just before I touch on that, related, just the final set of numbers, their gross margins, which is kind of related yeah. to, to what you're talking about here. It's like that, how efficient is the manufacturing process? And that disappoint, that actually missed expectations. Their gross margins for the quarter just gone was 75.1%. The expected was 75.5%. So that was a straight up, miss so most of the numbers slight beat and then that one miss and that's just not good enough for their share price so i you know on that gross margin thing well so look blackwell is their next gen chip and it's supposed to be multiple times more powerful right and back in the thing is back earlier in the year they said it would be ramping up to full production in the second half of the year right we're two full months into the second half of the year now, and still it's not being shipped. Now, they've said they expect to make several billion dollars in revenue from Blackwell chips in the coming quarter. 
But that's very, very vague guidance, right? Now, we've talked about in the past, there's this sort of, um, I can't remember the terminology they use now, but basically there's a, a gap. If you've got the next gen chip in the pipeline, it's coming and you, you know, you're sensationalizing how amazing it is compared to the Hopper chip, the old one, then your Googles and your Metas and your Amazons and your Microsofts, are they going to go, actually, you know what, let's stop buying Hopper. What's the point? We'll just wait for Blackwell. So is now maybe some of this slightly underwhelming revenue beat, maybe it's the beginning of these big boys starting to go, you know what, we're going to stop buying Hopper now. Let's just wait for Blackwell. Now, if Blackwell gets delayed further, then that gap widens and it can become a, a much larger you know, revenue risk for NVIDIA on these forecasts that they're putting out. So obviously there's a lot of unknowns there. Do, do these big tech giants, do they have to carry on buying hopper chips? You know, because they don't want to... There's a, there's a race on here. It's, a, it's the biggest race in history in many respects in terms of the money that's being thrown at it. And do Meta want to sit out of the race for two months whilst they wait for Blackwell? Or do they go, oh, God, we're just going to have to carry on buying Hopper right up to the day that Blackwell actually gets shipped? So we don't know if there's going to be this, this gap or not, but it's certainly an unknown uh, and a risk and just one of those elements that, that adds to a bit of nervousness around video share price up at these levels. The final piece within this was the addition and all. $50 billion of share buyback. So is that a little cushion, a little buffer to the market to soften the blood, some of these things you've described? Yeah, possibly. I don't know what to make of that. I mean, they're, they're, they're kind of, I think their cash, um, their cash balance right now is $25 billion, right? Um, they're, they're not making the profits, the likes of those other big Mag 7, I mean, of apart from Tesla, or maybe Amazon, who've got super tight margins. But they're not making profits like Google and Meta and Microsoft because they're, they're, they're not as big yet from a revenue dollars and a profit dollars point of view. And yet they're getting the bat out with $50 billion. This is the second um, share buyback announcement in, in, you know, in consecutive quarters. So, I mean, yes, it can help. But when you think their market cap is $3 trillion, um, you know, 50 billion, I mean, it's not a lot of money. It's a very weird phrase I've just said, 50 billion is not a lot of money, but it's not. I mean, it's like 2% of the market cap. And so, yes, it can help, but I think all the other stuff we've spoken about is way more important for influencing the share price than that stock buyback line item. You said, you said looking forward is, is ultimately really critical in terms of an investment perspective, direction of where the stock is going. And I, I totally agree with that. And I actually think there's two phases to this. First phase being um, everything you've described, data center, underwhelming, bad outlook, problems at Blackwell, margin squeeze, these are all far from the like rock star performers that we've seen for the yeah. for the last year and a half or so, however long it's been. However, I think that this is a really healthy transition for the next leg for Nvidia, in the sense of it was always inevitable they're going to have to normalise. You mentioned about comps; it's going to get that's bound to happen, and so. I think they're right in a sense. I mean, the numbers are the numbers, but the guidance where it's, okay, do you know what? I'm not going to stick a figure on Blackwell. I'm going to be vague. I'm going to yep. say several billion. The analysts are going to probe me and push me. And I'm not going to give you specifics because I don't want to set the bar out. All I want to do is manage. I want to manage the deceleration of the metrics you've described. And actually, I think, that they, you know, you say context, the stock was up, what, 300% last year, up another 150 plus this year. They've come up 8% and the market's bounced 
all of the MOOC in the NASDAQ futures from last night. So I think they played a blinder here. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I guess their, their challenge is man yeah, it's managing the deceleration. To put another way, it's kind of managing a orderly deflation of the bubble. Right, exactly. And... And yeah, I mean, I think one, the, the, you know, the first kind of part of that chapter is right. Let's let's make sure on the guidance side, as you're saying, let's let's be conservative with you know straight out of the Steve Jobs playbook. Um, let's be conservative with earnings, and then let's go and, and smash them. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know whether the unknown for me is, you know. This is the end. And actually, NVIDIA's share price peaked so far this year. And I think in your mind, we'll beat that. But at the moment, it's June the 18th. And it was 130 bucks. Okay, 131.85. Okay, that's the high. And, and it remains the high to this day, right? Now, what I want to know is, is this share price up here, does that account for... NVIDIA no longer absolutely dismantling and destroying all expectations because I think they're into the next phase, which is now, look, don't get me wrong, these numbers are amazing. You know, growing top line growth at 120% when you're clocking in, you know, $30 billion. It's, it's, it is amazing, but it's not rock star. So I think we're into the amazing phase. Now the rock star stuff's, you know, the Oasis rock star phase has, has ended. So I'm just thinking, well, where's the share price? What's the right share price for chapter two here? And I, I think it needs to, let me put it this way. I think it needs to grow into this share price. I don't think it'll take long because look, their growth rate is still fantastic. But I think there's a period of calm here and it all, and we've seen that in the last two months, two and a half months, it hasn't gone up, it's gone sideways with a lot of volatility. So I think it needs to grow into this share price a bit and then maybe later in the year, it can, it can justify going again. Um, but yeah, I think we're definitely into phase two now. To conclude then, can you put this into a bit of context from in a wider perspective, looking at the broader equity market and macro picture? Yeah, absolutely. And so, because as we've said, NVIDIA really, the poster child of the tech, of the AI boom, um, you know, tech has been leading the rally. If you're looking at broad indices like the S&P 500, for example, then tech has been leading the rally all year. Um, NVIDIA, just on its own, um, has made up more than a quarter of the S&P 500's gains. It's come from just that one stock. Um, and so that kind of sums it up. Uh, NVIDIA is 6% of that index and yet has delivered over one quarter of its total gains, right? But since NVIDIA's June peak, there's been a changing of the guard and tech is no longer leading the index higher. And in fact, if you look since June the 18th, um, tech is tech in a, as a sector in that index is actually the it's only one of two that are down in that two and a half month period and tech is the worst performer it's down like four percent okay in the last two months two and a half months communications is next worst it's down like one percent all other sectors are up and it's actually being led so there's there's been a sector rotation play ever since NVIDIA peaked June the 18th and money's coming out of big tech and we've spoken about this before it's come out of the mag 7 and it's going into some of these unloved sectors that have been underperforming especially the interest rate sensitive sectors now that rate cuts are coming so real estate for example that's been the best performer it's actually up nearly 15 percent in the last two and a half months right because rate cuts are coming so there's been this sector rotation and these numbers from NVIDIA last night, they don't tell me that's going to change. I mean, I think that tech is going to continue to underperform and it's no longer going to be that key driver on the upside. And it's just a question of whether all the rest can actually drive a big enough rally for the S&P to make new highs without tech joining in 
and tech is it's like 30 percent of the index right so that's my thesis is the sp is going to find it hard on the upside if tech are sat out of the game yeah this just like a time uh, challenge then because if the if tech can underperform and the market doesn't seriously sell off and the rest yeah. push it and the market goes into a whole pattern isn't it just a matter of time before then tech resumes some so I, interest again and then if you have that already baseline covered the downsides covered by a broader subset of sectors yeah you're missing the opposite argument though so here, here's what I think will happen. Either you're right, okay, and rate cuts start coming. There's no recession, or it's very mild. You know, the U.S. labor market stays, stays solid. Then you actually start to see genuine revenue coming into these other big tech firms from their AI investment. That's what really what we need to see next is the, the ridiculous AI investment that's going on has to start to bear fruit. Um, so if that can happen, right? No recession, AI revenues start to really ramp, then yeah, we're away to the races and we're gonna go again on the upside and tech will be all over it. However, the opposite is that the labor market weakens, the Fed aren't quite as aggressive cutting as people want, and then you get that double negative where tech aren't in the game anymore. And actually this rally you're seeing in all the other sectors really starts to lose momentum and then you get the double whammy of, of everything's bearish and then then the index can come off you know absolutely and so I th yeah we're, we're in an interesting hold pattern here whilst we first well next up is next week labor market report from the US um, Friday uh, end of next week will be the next key kind of uh, litmus test on on the u.s economy and therefore where these markets are going next mm, that's the big one it feels like yeah absolutely cool well look great to grab your thoughts very early uh, this morning so good to get that out fresh off the press thanks biz thanks everyone for listening and yeah see you next week catch you later thanks a lot